Yo, 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 it's your boy, Horny Lord Thorny. <laughs> Welcome in, Crypto Thorn. Welcome back to another episode of Blockchain Basement. That's not my name. That's somebody in the chat, by the way. Yeah. My name's TJ. Uh, we're going to be having a really fun show for you guys today. Uh, we've got Music Maven, Carnivore, Piccolo Rick, Pun 78th Div. Div. Yeah, whatever well, that is. Is it Leech Speak? So it's P U I N and then P E. I, I forget my Leech Speak. I don't know what Leech Speak is. But no, I don't oh my God. We, have, we have Bitcoin price pumping. We have some action, bullish, bullish movements. We've got altcoins <laughs> ripping. We've got uh, a potential, like we flipped over that 16.9 resistance. I was watching it all weekend. You know, yeah. Frank, we were talking about a lot of these levels. Oh, I forgot to share it out. But uh, Frank mm. was talking, you know, we were looking at that 16.9 all last week. We kept getting rejected, kept getting rejected. Then we hung out there basically from Friday night till was it Sunday afternoon, Sunday yeah. night? I was watching it all weekend, waiting like, is it gonna get rejected off this number? Are we gonna break through? What's gonna happen? And then you can, uh, like last night, all of a sudden, I was just like, ah! And she's like, what happened? And I was like, oh, uh, it finally went above 17K. Yep. You know, so hopefully, yep. I said, if we can hold this, you know, we, we, that, we can flip that resistance into support, maybe potentially, uh, and have some bullish, you know, making our ways up to maybe 18, maybe mm -hmm. up towards 20, not, not, not too much, too fast, don't get carried away, but, uh, I thought this was this was an appropriate. Uh, this was not just Greg's house here. It's a live look at uh, Greg's house on Twitter this morning. Also a live look at the uh, offices here. Boom! We got big green candles coming through the roof. I uh, yes. kind of forgot what this feels like. Uh, uh, it, it's a fun feeling uh, for a lot of us. I know some people were saying they were hoping uh, prices would go lower. We had a big, huge pump on Cardano, a massive pump on Gallo with a couple big announcements there. I think a like 150 percent or something crazy yeah, like that. Insane. Um, you insane. know. Oh, I guess I can pull this up and we can kind of look. Mark at it. Wahlberg. Up my That's all I know. Mode. Mark yeah. Wahlberg. Marky Mark. Uh, <laughs> the Rock. The Rock as yep. well. Yep. Uh, and then Brian was saying they finally made some announcements on how they're going to be doing stuff. Burned like they burned a bunch of coin or token oh, okay. or something like mm. that, which I think helps. So and and Shiba is trending on so too. like Shiba is so on the social metric and. Shib is looking fire. Like yeah. it also pumped. Like we literally talked about it this morning, and then it pumped like seven percent after the conversation. So I'm like, dang, I, that always happens. Like when you talk about something, I know, and then it happens. It's just I like know. why, like, uh, and then optimism was really good. It went from a dollar to a dollar thirty in like no time. Um, I was in an optimism trade Saturday. Did really good. Uh, I should have put more leverage on it, but I was trying to be less of a degen the day I should have been. You were being more less of a, of a de degen? That one day, I was like, you know, I want to go 5x instead of 10. Okay. And that's what I get for not doing 50, like my gut told me. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was trying to I was trying to be a good all-American citizen and only <laughs> leveraging with 5x, and, and it bit me. And it no bit me. No good deed goes on. Yeah, we got, so, let's see, on the 24-hour, still 60% on Gala, Aptos with a 40%, Zilka 47 Solana coming from the Depths all the way back up to sixteen dollars. Oh my god! Lido, we got Flow Maker at, at you know basically all sorts of alts with a big, which is good. They were right on the verge. Like if we were watching a lot of these wedges, and we said basically we're gonna need to either hopefully break up here. It is a bullish pattern. Some of the longer time frames were looking bullish, yeah. mm -hmm. but some of the if they were to lose these levels, it could get real ugly real fast. So good, nice pump for these alts here to hold. Absolutely. You know to stay out of bad technical setups, so to speak. Uh, and a lot of them now looking better and better on the uh, longer time frames. Let's see what else is. Yeah, Lido, Zilliqa, Salon. I mean, all kinds of stuff up. Crazy numbers there. Uh, but nice to see Bitcoin moving. Uh, we've also, I had pulled this just for fun over the weekend. We had, yes. um, you know, inflation may be starting to drop. We're going to look at CPI and some other stuff to keep an eye on later in the show. But uh, we have our very own Prepper Crypto here with a great tweet. That's right. We saw, uh, you know, Kronk That's here right. talking about the price of eggs from 98 cents all the way to $5.16. He said, if you Shoo. bought 200K worth of eggs and held it for a year ago, you'd be a millionaire. Well, I, you know, I want to point out, you know, the eggs would have gone bad. Well, of course. Year. Yeah, it's okay. a little tongue in cheek. That's but funny. I did have a staff meeting with my rooster to start banging it out. Hey, hey. and I'm going to be increasing the uh, the output here. Yeah, so I didn't choose it. this life; it chose me. Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. Drew right there bagging up the three dollar <laughs> eggs. It's right. only oh, it's a dime bag right there for for three eggs. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, so this weekend, uh, Wendy O tweeted like, "I'm going to get into the egg game or something," and I was yeah, like. What the hell? I didn't understand the tweet, and then I looked into it. And I was like, "Oh, like that makes so much more sense now." But that that is crazy. Of all things, like it is funny when you look at like normal commodities and like their charts, mm, like right. milk or oil or eggs. It's just like, how do you like? Where do you go, like TJ? Where would you go if you wanted the long dairy? That's you know what I mean. There's you know a what market I'm for it. 
That, there's a market for it. The CFTC yeah, like, oversees a lot of the agriculture and futures futures in agriculture. And I know that a lot of it has to do with like farmers' al- almanac outlooks and stuff. And I kind of made a little bit of note about the egg price going up in a video this weekend. Um, you know, just kind of citing all the natural disasters that have kind of actually been increasing uh, notably over the last few years. We haven't had a great harvest in America, so I would By wouldn't... natural disaster, do you mean uh, food facilities catching on fire? Allegedly, <laughs> over... Yeah, Allegedly. How, many, how many of them? Wasn't it like over 200? Uh, yeah. It was um, insane. Yeah. There were more in the past year than there have been in the past 100 years. Yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of really questionable but things. that doesn't mean anything. Our right. food supply is in threat, and that's why, you know, it's, it's always nice to have chickens in the backyard making the eggs for me, mm-hmm. so then I use that, you know, 10 bucks a week and throw that into crypto. Smart. Yeah, so. Crimson Caravan said a, de- a dozen eggs was almost seven dollars at my local Walmart. I was upset because yeah. I wanted devil the eggs. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know actually the answer to your question, AJ. Where to like go long? Yeah, I want to. I want a five x long mozzarella cheese. Well, I don't know. If where you can, I don't know if you can trade it on leverage, but I, I'm sure somewhere there's a place. I, wanna, you can, I gotta know. Yeah, I want to know. I gotta know now. I feel like Crypto Face knows. You know, I know he. Tra- you know, like there's definitely there's commodities. You know, he oil and some of that kind of features. stuff. You know, and, yeah. and Jada keeps yeah, telling me. Face. Jada keeps telling me that the organic eggs are going to like make me healthier but they're so expensive that they keep me stressed out and poor yeah, exactly. so it's really not What's working healthier, out buying bitcoin or you know cage-free eggs right you know, yeah no oh wow coins up 18 percent what about Corey? can you check on uh uh si for me as well still silver oh, gate. Yeah. see how much recovery they had because obviously we won't get we have a little bit here uh the dcg we've been talking about a lot digital currency group uh gemini genesis situation obviously is heating up no real resolution to it yet we know uh the winklevi sent a uh kind of put an ultimatum down for january was it eighth right and, yep. we, and we're here now on the ninth it hasn't been resolved yet but now ne- negotiations have been kicked into overdrive things mm. are talking or I mean, things are talking people are talking things are moving around mm-hmm. you know and part of it i think has to do with Criminal investigation by federal prosecutors. Corey only okay down two percent. Interesting on the on the day or the week or what? Like uh, I it looks like on the day. On the day, yeah. so they still haven't recovered much from that massive dump. Silvergate no. hasn't, which is interesting. All right, I think I think the Chicago Mercantile Exchange oh, CME. CME Group. Can, can I? Can I? Is there a derivative market for mozzarella cheese? Yes or no? That's what I need to know. And what are my thoughts on VA? TJ, what's that? Where's it at? V A I O T. What's that? I don't know. I haven't heard. What of that is one. that? Let's look. Okay. Might be a project. Eli Eli Tomac. Yeah, he he, he won that. Yo, Eli, just real quick tangent. Yeah, yeah. First Supercross race of the year, A1. Eli, whole shots, goes down, still wins. He's so Still wins. Malcolm Stewart almost got on the podium. Had a terrible crash with two minutes left to go. My homie Austin Forkner. It's par for the course for him. (laughs) Austin Forkner is projected to win the 250 title. He didn't even make it to the first corner. And out for the season, just an insane race. But yeah, right, let's talk about crypto. We'll yeah, talk about we crypto. don't know anything about that project. Just so you, you know, like it is a project. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, don't about know about that one, man. It. Sorry. Um, let's see. Yeah, Moto is fun. To watch. Yeah, I, I haven't watched so Supercross. Good. Atlanta, in a while. let's go. It's at, in April. Let's go. So Piccolo Rick said, "Okay, yeah, let's down. I'm, I'm down. Right. We'll get tickets. Just yes. uh, send me the link. We'll get I some will. tickets. Hundred uh, percent. Piccolo Rick, seventeen. I found thirty-seven frozen eggs in my backyard the day after Christmas from my neighbor's chickens jumping oh. the fence. That's interesting." There you go. Bullish. Say, Bullish. Yeah, hard boil those things. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's a payday these days. With almost the stimulus. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, so real quick, yeah, this came in over the weekend. Justin, U.S. government launches investigation. I think you guys covered it on Around the Blockchain yep. on Friday afternoon. Uh, digital. They're launching investigation into crypto giant Digital Currency Group, parent of Coindesk, Grayscale, Genesis. So mm-hmm. they're all tied up in this stuff with... Genesis and Gemini with the Winkle Valley twins. Obviously, that is uh, Barry Silbert. Uh, here's a couple. Just We're just going to blaze through some tweets and then get into some stories. The top story we're going to be talking about is kind of things to watch this week in crypto. You know, what altcoins are pumping. You know, why necessarily is Bitcoin pumping? Uh, this was just a fun one. We all love to uh, dunk on uh, dunk on this guy. So right before, as everything's pumping, or as everything's pumping, he's saying, Good chance, again, to get out of crypto, scale out of Chinese stocks, as neither can be trusted. I'm finding a very interesting narrative. They're definitely, mainstream media is attacking trust right now in mm-hmm. crypto very, very hard. Mm-hmm. There was uh, some 
a buffoon went on Joe Rogan and was talking all kinds oh of stupid God. stuff about I, Bitcoin. I liked what he said about the whole Chinese population, how because they haven't had girls that in like 10 years that their economy is basically done. Did you hear that whole bit? On, on they Rogan? don't have girls. Yeah, though. there was the same guy that was talking on Bitcoin. Like he obviously, like Nick Demondi said on Twitter that he has some blind spots Clear but on. his whole bit on like how chinese how they only kept the boys and the women like there's like a whole society of chinese men who are lonely and the the suicide rates insanely high because the women are all super prim because there's so little of them that they will only partner with like the top of the triangle in chinese men hmm. so there's like this entire society of people who are alone and killing themselves and i don't think that's funny by the way it's, no, it's actually it's happening and um and and he's basically saying that because like most of their society is like 30 40 50 60 that like when that when the when they die off there's not going to be anyone to replace their society and it's like you have to listen to it he says it way better than me but uh he's saying in 10 years that they're like up against the ropes basically what they're saying yeah. i mean i agree i i don't i haven't heard all of that details i agree that china as a superpower is very overplayed in my opinion. I don't oh, think for it's sure. nearly as robust and a strong economy as people like to project. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, you know, like a lot of it is a house of cards in a lot of different ways with their mm -hmm. investments and their real estate. And, and to some of that point, population and some of, you know, a lot of the points you just made, I haven't, I didn't hear his talking points on that. I actually didn't see the whole podcast on Rogan. I just saw some of the highlights and I don't know if yeah. we'll get into it too much. His <clears throat> takes on Bitcoin were just absolutely atrocious in my opinion. Yeah, uh, I only, like I said, I saw two or three clips and I was like, what is he even talking about? Does it's even... a dumpster fire. Well, he talked about that. it going negative. He talked about the Bitcoin price going negative. I'm like, how? What, how? Yeah. What, what is he even, you know, yeah, you heard just... me rage about that earlier. He's like, I'm just going ne literally how? Yeah. Yeah. And what? And it, you know what? I, Joe Rogan, I feel like, you know, he's just going to let people kind of share their opinions. That's kind of the point of his he podcast. He lets people dig their own graves. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I he was totally just like, huh, yeah. okay, well, all right, if that's what you think, but that's what you think. But then he realized he brought in, like, the effective altruism, like, teacher, like, uh, Sam bankman frieds mentor in effective altruism was on his show recently. Really? And he realized he it that. as he was going through the... He was like going through this write up on FTX. He's like, wait a minute, who's this guy? Wait a minute, who's that guy? We just had him on. And there was talking about... <laughs> the guy was there talking about effective altruism. And then... In China, uh, the word is bailan. It's the uh, the people have uh, come to a consensus of non-participation is their only form of rebellion at this point because mm. they will be physically stomped out. Mm. So not participating in the economy is the word bailan is being heavily um, employed just internally within yeah. Chinese populations. And I saw, did you see the Tesla uh, refunds being demanded at no. Tesla dealerships in China? Really? Mm. So the cost was so high over the past few years that people went in, they bought their Teslas, and now the price has collapsed so low because of the, the lack of demand and the shutdown of economy mm. that the people are trying to protest and demand payments back or refunds and, for the difference in price and also um like tease there's like it's like a 12 minute clip i'll send it to you after this but there's like a there's like a lack of leadership because like their president like he's not getting correct information to make informed decisions because everyone's scared to talk to the guy right you know what i mean like he like you know all the missing billionaires and x y and z like no one will tell him the truth yeah. because they only tell him what he wants to hear so he lives in like this echo chamber of five people and he thinks he's doing the right thing when he's not getting correct information to make in, uh, intellectual uh, decisions. So it's just a big uh It's big dangerous, cluster. dangerous to live in a bubble and make decisions. For sure. Off hey, yeah. well, let's talk about crypto. Yeah. Let's talk about crypto, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, we'll, we'll touch on this it real quick. I know we've talked about it a ton, the Genesis Digital Currency Group facing the SEC, and then we're going to kind of talk about what we think caused the Bitcoin price to pump this week, where we think the price is going to be on Friday, and looking at a couple different uh, articles uh yeah real quick uh, new type trader says there are probably many more reasons why they would want to offline themselves there in china we've got you know there's going to be no one left to take care of all the old ones not enough young people to pay taxes right country always needs a strong younger population to keep working and create demand for goods or else mm. new type trader jack ma was finally released oh that's interesting that's interesting. Been showing his face yeah he he got uh jack ma founder of alibaba kind of a big uh big tycoon over there a lot of different things has been you know, and so, some maybe ties to CZ at one point, but, yeah. um, you know, Weird. we'll, we'll come like back to that. Lovers? What's that? <laughs> like they were lovers? No, no, no. <laughs> the, CZ oh. potentially <laughs> went to Jack Ma's uh, university or something like that at some That's point. That's a euphemism. But, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Genesis owner DCG faces SEC Department of Justice probes report. The interesting thing about this is I believe 
They started looking into them uh, before the FTX collapse, yeah. which is pretty interesting. Federal prosecutors in New York, along with SEC, are investigating Digital Currency Group for internal transfers at its lending subsidiary Genesis. And this is reported by Bloomberg on Friday. Like I said, you guys touched on this on Around the Blockchain, which if you guys aren't subscribed to Around the Blockchain, go check out Around the Blockchain on YouTube. Also, a shout out to Twitch, our partner here, twitch.tv underscore or twitch.tv slash bitboy underscore crypto if you want to join us live in the chat here. Also, <laughs> if you're hearing it any other anywhere else, please smash the likes and share and subscribe. You know, it is on audio platform as well. So if you guys want to look for this while you drive, check out Blockchain Basement. It should be distributed on most audio platforms uh, that are synced with Libsyn. Uh, so be sure to check it all out, all those places. Uh, but DCG has received requests for documents and interviews by prosecutors in the Eastern District investigators or investigations have not yet been made public by authorities and are just beginning to take shape. Neither DCG nor the company's chief executive, Barry Silbert, has been accused of any criminal conduct by authorities as of yet. Digital Currency Group has a strong culture of integrity and has always conducted its business <laughs> lawfully, a company spokesperson told Decrypt. Oh um, you know, I, I would take the counter on that one. We yeah. have no knowledge or reason to believe that there is any... Eastern District of New York investigation into DCG, a spokesperson for Genesis, would not confirm the existence of any investigation, telling Decrypt that it does not comment on specific legal or regulatory cases. Genesis re maintains regular dialogue and cooperates with relevant regular regulators and authorities when it receives inquiries. Uh, claims that DCG were under investigation by the SEC began to crop up on Twitter. And yeah, this guy here, Andrew, he's been on top of a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. Again, he breaks it pretty early. It's sometimes it's unconfirmed, so we have to be a little bit uh, careful with what we say. But like, as far as everything he's put out so far has been fairly accurate. So I'm following pretty closely what he's putting out, and then you can be a little bit ahead of the curve. Uh, but don't take it, you know, don't make major, major, major decisions based on it. You know, like think for yourself, of course. Uh, he was saying decrypt that he was tipped off days earlier by a whistleblower at DCG working directly with the SEC criminal investigation by federal prosecutors into DCG. This is the interesting part. Began prior to the sudden collapse of FTX exchange in November, according mm. to Bloomberg, meaning they were, this was already ongoing when the thing, when everything went belly up shortly after FTX plunged into bankruptcy, Genesis paused withdraws from its lending platform, citing unprecedented market turmoil. Uh, aside from DCG, Parent company, blah, 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 news desk. Uh, FTX had gone under Genesis, had already burned. Whoa, what did it just do? Burned by the implosion Ooh. of the crypto hedge fund, three hours capital. We've already talked about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's basically it. There's an ongoing investigation. Cameron Winklevoss still is accusing Silbert of bad faith stall tactics, which I tend to agree with. They're kind of just put it, pushing them off. Yep. It looks like they're trying to come up with the money from another source and just trying to buy time, maybe waiting for a little bit of a pump. Who knows? Uh, it's subsequent update to clients, Genesis interim CEO, and said Genesis is focused on finding a solution for our borrowing and lending intermediate intermediation business. The past Thursday, Genesis had to let go of 30% of its staff. These measures are part of our ongoing efforts to move forward as a business. So you said they're looking for a pump, like what's currently occurring. I, like I think they're, they're going to need a little bit more than that, yeah. but oh, yeah. yeah, that is so just timing. Yeah. They knew already, and, you know, the, the investigations w weren't made public until after everyone can be defrauded of billions of dollars. Like, it just sucks that the DOJ, I mean, I did see, like, three different DOJ involvement stories today. The DOJ is all mm -hmm. over crypto this morning. They are. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's really interesting that the is that DOJ... the Department of Juxtaposition? <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels like. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Basically, man, like, yeah. you know, you're the D Department of Justice overseeing the justice of the land, but you know that your elected officials received fraudulent money yep. that the American public didn't know about at the time. You don't release that information to the American public. You let yep. them keep dumping their money into this fraud. And then <clears throat> you get a walk back and do years of litigation. I'm going to go on a little bit of a, a sidebar here. This is financial related, not necessarily crypto related. I've been watching. I think I mentioned it last week. The sidebar. Hold on. Uh, been watching Madoff uh, on uh, Netflix and speaking of government corruption, regulators not doing enough, having a lot of this information, allowing more and more people to be scammed out of billions of dollars without taking action that could have prevented it. 
Twitch didn't send out notifications today. Mm. Interesting. Glad I changed in. Okay, cool. I was wondering. We are a little bit low on Twitch, so we need to check. Uh, maybe check the schedule or something. I'm not I've sure. Been here anyway. Someone else said they saw a notification for 11:30. So what? Well, that's weird. I had a notification at 11:30 for the basement, so I thought they were back. Oh, you know what? I bet that has something. To ben was we we did the morning stream from Vegas. I bet they thought we were simulcasting. Yeah, the wires probably got crossed. <sighs> anyway. Well, we're glad you guys are here. Hopefully everybody shows up. Yeah, yeah. thanks for coming, everybody. I'll uh, be here. I've been watching this Madoff thing, and it's really got my brain going. It's very, so many similarities back to crypto. It makes you, obviously, it makes you think of SBF and FTX a lot other than the timeline. It's this is a, a, basically a money laundering scheme that went on for four decades, mm -hmm. right under the nose of the SEC with people sending information to the SEC time after time with the SEC investigating time after time and giving a clean bill of health or the, not a full scale investigation. They would do very minimal prods. One, one time just calling them up and saying, hey, are you running a Ponzi? No? Okay, cool. And then letting him go, and that was it. Like that, I'm serious. That, that's what was going on. Literally. Uh, and, it, wow. and it just absolutely blows my mind. And then they would claim, oh, we didn't have enough funding. We didn't have, like, literally, they handed you the case on a silver platter. Right. Why do I have, it looks like I have something. That's just your face. Ah, something's dangling on the, anyway. Well, so my favorite is how everybody <laughs> meme lorded, how they're like, oh, Sam Bankman. Yeah. But it's like Bernie made, made off. off with your money. Yeah, right. I know. It's, like, you can't make it up. It's very, like, That's hilarious. It's hard to wrap your head around. You start looking at the timelines. He was spending a lot of time in West Palm Beach around a lot of other very prominent people from the 90s to the 2000s. You know, I'm talking Trump's, talking Clinton, talking Epstein, you know, right. these kind of people all there. We're talking billions of dollars from global elites all around the world, not just here in the United States. They were pulling in money from all over Europe. Some of the biggest most prominent uh, lords and royalty in, you know, all these different banks it was all secret. It was all dark shadow money that nobody knew about. It's just the way that this operated just it's very sketchy. doesn't make any sense. Even the people that investigated, you know, like he gave them all the information they needed one time to the SEC, wrote it down on a piece of paper. And mm -hmm. then he said, I asked these people under oath why they never followed up on it. And I could never get a clear answer. Like they just forgot. The answer was, we forgot, we we don't know, it fell through the cracks. And it's like, no, you know they went to do it, and somebody very high up said, oh, I'll take care of that, and they just sat on it, or they buried it, or it just never got followed up on multiple times. Uh, Big Hand Dan said, it's all connected, and we're all pawns in the elite game of money theft. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they're crooks, says Carnivore. Uh, Madoff was great, literally just watched it last night, said Urkelson. Yeah, I think I'm three episodes in, I think there's one left. Uh all gone quiet in China building company Evergrande. I guess they're not in. No, they're still in a lot of, Big lot, problem. Lot of S. They just, Big that's what problem. I'm saying. It's a house of cards in China. Yeah. I got a notification at 1130 as well. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll check on that. Make sure it's that gets fixed. The truth fixed. is out there. there. The it is. is it's all there. a house. Of, you're right. It's a house of cards everywhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's uh, all. Everything's a giant Ponzi, everything's guys. Everything's a scam. If you figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> there was an a awesome video. I know we talk about uh, rehypothecation of money and fractional reserve banking, but like specifically looking at you put $100 in a bank. And then they fractionally reserve out 90. And then that 90 actually goes to about $1,100 worth of money in the system. Yeah. It's like right off the bat, you're like, okay, that's more than a 2X. And a 2X would be a problem. Right. We're above 7X. That was a problem. And it just keeps going to where you're just like, this is yeah, absolute tomfoolery. It's like the South Park bit where he like gives them $100. And he's like, he's like, where's my money? He's like, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's like the whole bit and it's like <laughs> that's it it's gone, <laughs> it's gone. there's like, no money it's, it's so more funny but it's gnomes it's like step one skilled <laughs> step two uh, no hold on we gotta do it right so step one little underpants step, step two profit <laughs> no no step two yeah. is and step three know. is profit yeah yeah <laughs> these are the catalyst society needs to make an actual change man like these are the growing pains four decades of traditional finance fraud you know dark money world elites uh it's all being ex exposed to a degree i would say a lot of people are waking up um and i sure hope so you yeah. know yeah. And, and this Please. is what i would say to the people that say like because we're hearing a resounding uh, Kevin O'Leary's on this talking point. That guy that was on Rogan's on this talking point. The mainstream media's on this talking point. We need people in crypto we can trust. We need Goldman Sachs. We need these traditional players that have been around a long time that we have trust in. It's like, guys, we don't have trust in that. The whole no. purpose of this is we don't want to trust the people that were running the system before because of what Drew was just saying. They've wrecked us over and over and over again. And if we continue to trust them, guess what they're going to do? They're going to wreck us again. Yeah, so we do need they to want us to be a hopeless house 
housewife from the 50s that just deals with abuse? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. That's exactly what they're saying. They're saying, yes. look, take take crypto and put it in the hands of Goldman Sachs. It's, yeah, it's right. loud and clear right now if you're listening to what they're saying. Oh, because FTX collapsed, Bitcoin's a scam. Or all these crypto guys, you can't trust them. You can only trust the legacy guys. So we need to get this out of the up and coming you know, the tech guy's hands and put it into the legacy traditional finance player's hands. Mm -hmm. But if you look at traditional finance, you can see very clearly they should not be trusted. Nope. They're greedy. Mm -hmm. They put themselves over the people every single time. And you can follow the money over and over and over and see time after time after time that the system has failed. And that's the whole And 2008 was the beginning of what prompted launching Bitcoin, that failure was look, we want to have something that we can not trust governments, not trust big banks, yeah. because we've learned they're not trustworthy. And eventually, over time, it will get corrupted. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. very clear. If you're running the money system, you know, he who has the gold makes the rules, as they say, you're going to make the rules in your favor when you have all the gold. And that's just... What the? What are the time Wait. after time? Re uh, time after really time. quick, oh, crypt crypto <laughs> thorn, I, uh, bullish on Wealth Fargo, Def being a good player in the crypto world. Did you see the story no, he, about that's, the? That's sarcasm. Okay, that's pure sarcasm. I was about to you say the, 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 the Wells Fargo the VP. Did yeah. you hear, hear that story, TJ? Yeah. Which the, the Wells Fargo vice president got fired because he uh, urinated on a woman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. On a on he was on urinating an airplane on women Hold on flights. On. Basically. Hold on. So what's the real story? Allegedly. Then? Yeah. yeah. Those are simple bear market activities, you guys. Okay, just <laughs> calm down. Uh, yeah, I mean, let alone we were talking last time making fake, and that's basically what he's saying. Like Wells Fargo is about as corrupt as it can be. J.P. Morgan, yes. we've seen time and time again. Like they're they're making a big deal about one thing here, and we've got billions and bill. We got basically the entire crypto, the entire market cap of crypto has been what like the banks have been fined in the last like five years, probably if that. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's, Harrison Duncan. Yeah, no, it's true. Crimson Caravan. I mean, look it up. It was a was it over the weekend that yeah, story? I, I saw it. it. The Washington Post posted it. Yeah, and you know, like, um, what's the Wells real Fargo? Story, like though? their their slogan is courtesy. <laughs> you know, at least they stuck to their guns. You know, he probably apologized. You know, oh, gosh, probably he's probably a nice enough guy. <laughs> what was that BJ? Uh, <laughs> what's the real news story? But also, hold on. This is very important. Okay. Very important. I felt like it was. Ralphie227 says, I like everyone in this panel very much. Said that in Borat voice. Very you much. Very nice. Much. Thank you, Ralphie227. <laughs> we like you too. We appreciate all you guys being here. We love doing the show. It was really bummer last week when uh, Twitch was down. We couldn't, we had to do it without you guys. So, mm. uh, yeah, we're getting, everybody's rolling in here now. So, we got, we're getting, we're getting stacked up. We'll get the uh, notification fixed next time. My wife's Wells Fargo rep wouldn't allow us to invest in crypto unless we had a net worth of over $1 million. Wouldn't let you oh, invest fair. in crypto. Yeah. You wouldn't, hear those words? That's fair. Wouldn't you don't have enough you. money yet, so we're not going to let you make yeah, an instrumental we're not gonna, yeah. amount of it. Oh, crap. I accidentally closed it. I know. I really think this all comes down to, like, we all need to look at each other and just go, like, let's just, like, use crypto for everything. Right. Like, there needs to be, like, uh, a crypto eBay, a crypto food store, a crypto everything, and we just, like, won't even put it to the dollar and you know when i when i would learn spanish i didn't learn spanish but i took a spanish class in high school right and then you know i would always ask miss robinson miss robinson like like what does this mean in english and then she said no aj you need to start thinking about it in spanish right and that's what we need to do we need to stop caring about the peg to the dollar and we need to start thinking in terms of crypto yeah like so and then metaphor. and basically like if we just all agreed to just use crypto and nothing else we could just kind of yeah. Circ, you know, get it's out of this yeah, whole thing. It's called circular economy. I was waiting for you to get there. Yeah, that's, I, that's what I was trying yeah. to say, but yes, exactly. Uh, Brian uh, Harrington, another uh, uh, shout out to him. He's another Bitcoiner maximalist. He's in, uh, I don't know if he's, he's pretty maxi, but he's a, he's a Bitcoiner in uh, Orange County. He's been really pushing that concept for a long time, trying to work with local communities. Orange County actually a little bit more uh, base than you would think for being in the middle of California. They were They pushed back pretty hard on a lot of the stuff that was going on during 2020. Uh, and he was working really hard with a lot of people in Orange County to create a, that, that exactly what AJ was just talking about, a circular economy where like, okay, look, we've got a local uh, country store or, you know, like a grocery store that can take, that will take Bitcoin for payment. We've got a mechanic that'll do it now. We've got a daycare that'll do it now. We've got, you know, like if you can get enough different industries to do it and then they can all work together 
and one Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin, and you're yeah. you think in that mindset, uh, it does. The revolution begins there. What the revolution? Exactly. The revolution you would begins see there. a complete change in our modern monetary theory in one month if oh, they yeah. lost the velocity of the dollar and circulating U.S. dollars went into Bitcoin. The entire change, the entire system would be replumbed within a month, in my opinion. The amazing things can happen when you take the velocity of the dollar away. So that's the truth has spoken. It's a painful, it's an <laughs> ugly thing to imagine, but you know, I'm tired of being governed by tyrants. So I'm not going to give them I want to be governed harder, daddy. No. Govern me harder, please. Yeah, that's, no, that's a, that's a funny uh, bumper sticker. But no, I, get, I hate the government. Get us yeah, out. I want, the, the beautiful thing about B Bitcoin is for the first time in human history, this is an Andreas Antonopoulos quote, we, there, we can have rules without rulers. We can have, you know, uh, governments without governors. We can have society that is actually uh, structured and governed without people actually yeah. doing that. Mm. And it's just an agreement, and it and it works. It, it's going to be a beautiful thing. We're gonna, but it's going to be a battle. They're not going to let it. They're not going to give up the control they have quickly. Uh, Karate says, TJ, you like UJ or TCU? And I got to go, dogs. I mean, come on, we're here in Georgia. I'm not a huge college guy, but you know, that's that's a that's a given. I think we're like a Did you 15, 20 point favorite. Build it on Cardano, Urkelson says. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Let's I going. saw a, a story this morning. Uh, the first AI um, <laughs> lawyer. Uh, or I saw is, that. Is the first AI involvement with a law case. And I think that, but just we say it's going to take a while. I think it has a potential to go really, really quickly. If we embrace the technology and let, you know, AI have an involvement um, to a greater degree, like it can move really, really fast. Um Plus the development of the metaverse and all that stuff within it, kind of like what Johnny was talking about, how we we do have a potential to hit that exponential growth rate um, over the next few years with just how fast AI learns and what. Just look what Chat GPT is doing. I yeah. agree. And you know, real crazy. quick, but I'm going to come back to that. But uh, we got two tr comments in a row. The Sofa King Cryptic says the truth has spoken. I'm going to need that T-shirt, please, for extra fluffy guys. <laughs> yes. And then literally the very next comment, Corey Harden, I would love some Druth merch, but I would hate to have hey. to explain to everyone what that means. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll get on that. Uh, hey, I own the IP. Remember, Dude, I started. We, should get we have it live, me saying the truth is out there. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know. I Drew, know. I own you. It was good. Okay. Was I'm good. all right with that, dude. I trust I'm you. I'm all right me. with that. Uh, but you can get with, get with Morel and see about uh, getting some of those made because that would be fun. Drew, I go by daddy now. Okay. Okay. Manawak said, okay, "TJ, what? can okay, Hit Daddy, Network run you. without you being in charge." Um, I'm working on it, Manawak. I'm working on it. It can. It's just not. We're not. Not, not right now. But by 2024, the goal is yes. Um, and it's a, it's a work in progress. Uh, so and on that note, to what you were talking about, we were having a conversation about different emerging technologies, and I think obviously we all care about crypto, but mm. it's good to. Keep an eye on other emerging technologies as well. Drew was talking about uh, the first AI battled uh, legal case today. And I, I agree with this sentiment 100%. Do not be afraid of it. AI will not replace you. A person using AI will. And you want to be the person using AI. You don't want to be replaced by somebody else who's yep. using AI. And there's a lot of amazing uses you can use for it. Like he was saying, the legal stuff is very interesting. I saw a post today. Somebody offered the attorneys that are trying to do the ones that did that same story where they had somebody argue the case with AI. They offered a million dollars for any attorney that's arguing a Supreme Court case to take earbuds and word for word use the AI arguments in court and just see how that goes. Uh, it's going to get really, really interesting. What was fascinating to me, uh, Drew, Johnny, and I this morning were talking about how it will you need things like AI, like what AI is going to be able to do is going to be what's going to get the metaverse where it needs to go because you can have AIs creating these yeah. environments way faster and way more efficiently than it would take humans to program them all. And so AI will move blockchain forward, will move metaverse forward, will move gaming forward. All of these things that we know are coming based on the trends we see, but we're not sure how the technology is going to get there. Mm -hmm. One emerging technology releases another emerging technology. And then when you get AI writing code and creating metaverses, and then you get blockchains that interact with them, and then you can write better and more efficient smart contracts, and then you can get transaction costs down, you can get throughput time up, you know, like it all works together mm. to create the reality that we know is going to be here probably sooner than we think, to Drew's point, mm. it seems 
10, 15 years away right now when you look at what the current tech can do, but we're just one glass ceiling breakthrough away on blockchain, on AI, on like, look at what the uh, battery storage did in the last several years, right. you know, mm. look at what energy uh, breakthrough could do with, uh, was it, we were talking about just the other day with fusion and some of the, or mm. some of that stuff. So like one breakthrough releases another breakthrough, releases another breakthrough, and that's what creates that, uh, I, is it a Metcalf's law of like the, the computing happen, power will doubles and the price halves every year or something like that? Like, and it's been going on ever since the invention of computing, basically. Moore's. Is it Moore's law? I always forget. Met I, Metcalf's I get them mixed is up like too. what can happen, will happen kind of thing. Okay, mm -hmm. so that it is so Moore's, Moore's law. law is the number of transistors on microchip doubles every two years. And all I, of I a feel sudden, like that's close to what you're talking all about. All of a sudden, you're paying Terminator to get off your lawn with Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just kidding. AI is going to be used for good and bad. There's there's both sides of the coin with this technology. Mm -hmm. AJ <laughs> was talking about how awesome it is for research this morning. Yeah, yeah literally right good. after I yeah. pulled all those stories about AI yeah. and we're talking like, about the uh, EJ is like, man. Research and this thing was easy because yeah. ChatGPT was telling me all about it. And yeah, knew my, to go. so even like yesterday, uh, my buddy Grant just moved um, to Atlanta from Delaware. He's like a pop music artist. He's like about to sign a record deal and all this stuff. And he's like, I, I, I can't like market my name. Like my name sucks. Like I need a name. And I was like, Don't worry, fam. I got you. And I was like, Hey, <laughs> if you're like a music manager and you're signing an alternative rock pop music artist. Uh, give me 10 names and it get, lift me like Midnight Moon, Indigo Blue, Luna Lark, la da da. I really like Luna Lark. That yeah, one might stick. Cool. But yeah, so he might hole? get his name from ChatGPT. <laughs> you ready for the conspiracy hole? All right. Yes. So whereas I am not bullish on ChatGPT for research because who is feeding the information to the AI? It won't tell you about so, Uyghurs. So it's going to be the same thing. So right now we're saying a lot of news sources are extremely encapsulated in what they want to feed you. Yep. Same thing will happen once everyone becomes extremely dependent on this. It's all they're going to use. And it's going to have the same Google effect where whatever information they want you to have is what's going to go in through there. Well, you can, feed, you can feed it your own sources. When? Today. Right now. Yeah. Can I, can, I can send it the link to this video and tell it to learn everything in this video. It won't yep. discuss Uyghurs in China. It yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, won't there, it does have. It, I'm not saying it's not. It does have its limitations, but no. you can tell it. You can take your take your favorite science podcast. Somebody's mm -hmm. already done this, and you can basically it can learn everything in every single episode of what you wanted to learn, and then it'll recall based on that. Mm -hmm. So it has. It has some. But I get what your point is. You can't trust anything 100% because yeah, it was created by humans. It is programmed by humans. Yeah, they can the change the programming to fit their incentives, and that's something you always need to keep in the back of your mind. Because it's still a centralized program. Yes, it still yeah. has a bias. You know, it's still mm -hmm, based. You know, mm -hmm. it's based on. You know, you have to look at anything input when you're looking at. But it is open source. You can download it, and you can you can tweak it yourself. You can change things. Uh, let's see. I made it write a summary on a physics journal. <laughs> <Easy>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just got home from the, yeah. Oh, hey, speaking of just chemistry, bro, just hey got home from the lab. How's hey everyone doing in the basement? We're doing nerd. great. We're doing What's great. Up? We're back. Uh, all right, we're going to talk some price here. We're going to shift from AI. Right. I'm not saying I like electric cars, but imagine them in the next 20 years. All right, so Satoshi Flipper, if you guys aren't following him, he's. I feel like he's been doing some great analysis recently. Uh, used to be around a lot more, kind of went away for a while, and he's been back. I tend to agree with most of his takes here. Uh, we're going to talk. He posted this. What is this? Today's the 7th, right? Uh, ninth. ninth. Yeah. See, ninth. we were looking at this over the weekend. So I was trying. I dropped stuff in the chat. Uh, pretty much nonstop. Yeah, Gala be pumping. We talked about that at the top. Um, I and this, set up this my is music starting to this, weekend. this is starting to play out. I was watching for this all weekend from Friday to Sunday. Uh, basically, he's saying if the next CPI doesn't come in hot, specifically comes in sub seven, then he's. He's talking about BTC to 19K, yeah. you know, with an update here. This is very similar to what I think could happen if everything goes well. Updated idea, slow grind up all week, flip resistance to support, then CPI meets expectation at 6.6, .6, mm -hmm. and it sends BTC to the top of this channel, 20K. That's obviously the extreme uh, bullish scenario there that could play out. I'm hoping we move up towards like 18K. I think that should be extremely easy to do by the end of this week. Um, so he's feeling pretty bullish. That's the gut feeling I had on the CPI is it's going to come out weak. I think the wording is still going to be hawkish, but the CPI data is going to be better than expected. Better um, than so when you say weak, you mean uh, yeah, inflation going us. down. Right. I've seen, I, I tend to agree. Yeah. I think like I think the expected is it's six point six. I think we could see like a six point one, mm -hmm. six point. I don't think we're going to see like anything too too dramatic right. underneath. But anything under six point six is going to be extremely bullish for the markets. 
Uh, we'll, we'll talk about why in just a minute. Uh, he also, I was also looking at this. I think this was just last night when when the pump first started. This is another. This is a different way. You know, when Frank's on, we look at volume profiles a lot. If you guys aren't used to looking at an order book, I mean, this is just basically the order book on Binance, which is going to be one of your biggest. Is where most of the volume is, most of the liquidity. I mean, you can look at some. Um, well, the pseudo opacity red lines are the um, the sell buy walls, right? The pseudo opacity you're talking yeah, about like down that. here yes yeah. yes uh and basically he's just looking at the number these are this is in bitcoin so you've got 580 bitcoin trying to be sold at 17.3 345 bitcoin at 17.4 250 at 17.5 mm -hmm. then you can see it starts to really lighten up all the way up to 18.5 there's some decent so like you can look at the the sell walls of people they have their sell orders in and you know okay a, a lot of bitcoins is going to need to be bought at these prices to get through these things or we're just going to get rejected um where are we sitting at right now still 17 one right or two uh, 17 350 yeah so. so you can see like it and it and it's basically it's trying to eat away at this this is since last night and we've been we got a strong pump up and then we've been kind of stuck at 17 three and it's going to take some work to get through some of these levels uh not saying it's impossible but you know obviously you just need a certain amount of volume to bust so through about a thousand bitcoin approximately yeah a little little bit looks like a little bit more but uh, for BTC, there's small volume node at 17.8, and after that, it's a large gap in volume until the next one around 19. Exactly. So yeah, nice CPI and bulls. That's exactly the scenario I'm looking at there. Push up to 19k potentially. Like if we can clear, if we can hold seven, you know, where we're at right now, get some bullishness, and then uh, you know, push up to that 17.8 to 19. It's you know, it's a pretty good uh, gap there. Yeah. So I wanted to point that out. We've got. Uh, this is another interesting factor. The heavy selling pressure from Bitcoin miners that has barraged the market the last four months has finally subsided. You know, mm, keywords for now. Uh, it might come back, but we can see here, we've looked at it a decent amount. Massive. This is since September. Yeah. All the way to January. Massive, massive selling pressure. And here's, here we go. We're flipping positive for the first time. Do you remember? Yeah. Since September. Wasn't it on Friday that Marathon came out celebrating? Was it? Friday, yeah, marathon, yeah, like marathon yeah. came out and said, "Hey, we don't have any debt. We're still in business. We still got our miners. We're still right. buying. <laughs> so you still have some pockets of you know financially uh, responsible companies that are coming out on top, and they're going to be the major winners." <laughs> well, let me <laughs> let's hang on this one. Uh, big hands, Dan has a good question. I wish Nick was in here because this is kind of his theory. Mm. Uh, does anyone else feel like these numbers are being manufactured in order to get one last exit liquidity? And then drop on some black swan event. See, I, I do. I've been. I don't want to say like that's what I'm thinking, but when this stuff ha starts to happen, there's a little voice in the back of my head that's like, "What are they getting at? Sure. Yeah. Like, what? What is this? Because like, I, mm -hmm. I just like the least expected thing is the most probable outcome. That's always what happens. We never see it come in hindsight. It's always 2020, mm -hmm. and every time, like you know, like in. All reality, this isn't that big of a pump, sure. and it's just enough for people to go like, "Oh shit!" Like, here we go right. back to the moon, and then I everyone know. hops in after the pump, and then you get wrecked. And that's just like, I, I watch it. I watch it like a hawk. Right What's that? Everyone's looking for hopium right now. Yeah, and right. see, okay. I've I'm I tend to think. It it just kind of depends on how you define it. Is it a bear? Is it a what they call a bear market rally? Meaning, like, I don't think we're going straight back to all time highs anytime soon. I've said it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a long year. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be a slow grind up. We're going to get some pumps. We're going to fall back. But I think this is part of that slow grind up. This is the beginning of it. Yep. And you know, if we can flip some significant levels and hold them, it bodes well. Now, right. that being said, you know, the last shoe to drop, in my opinion, and I've been talking about it literally since the day we started kind of going live exclusively on this channel. Only thing I see us pushing lower lows right now is a mass is something like Silvergate, Genesis, you know, a huge debacle there that just literally freezes the entire industry, and makes it impossible for people to buy or sell. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think at this point this is going to happen. I think, yeah, I believe in a crab market. Uh, I think I've seen enough to where 15, I don't think we'll go dramatically below 15. I don't see anything in the market that really could cause that at this point. Um, other than what I just mentioned, which I think I'd say I'd put it at 70. I feel 75% confident that's not going to happen. So I'm yeah. I'm operating under the assumption that DCG holds Genesis makes it together. But they could be it, there's a scenario where that happens and we get stuck in that 10 year bear, uh, bear market that people are talking about. Mm -hmm. and again, I'm following the four year cycles. We're tracking literally directly on the four year cycle. This is exactly what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So it's you know, it's very 
in my opinion, predictable at this point to, to operate at least within these ranges. Now, what I, I don't think we're going straight to 20K and staying there. I think mm -hmm. what if we can, my goal, we have a good pump this week and we don't go back below 17. That's all we need to do. So if right, we go up to right. 18 and fall back to 17, one or two, cool. If we go up to 19 and fall back to 17, cool. If we go up to 20 and fall back, cool. As long as we don't go back under 16, nine or, and keep making nice. lower lows and then those resistance get harder and harder and harder, Hey, BJ. Well, uh, there yeah. isn't there is there is an argument for that because like kind of like first of the year, second of the year, like before Bitcoin kind of really turned around, or even I think it might have been the day before New Year's Eve. Anyway, there was um there was bullish divergence on the five day Bitcoin chart, yes. and also if you draw a line from the twenty twenty bottom, um, or that was it the nineteen bottom, the twenty bottom to now where we were in that dip was that line mm -hmm. and we never broke through that line so like even if we like negatively retest this i feel as long as we hold that long like structural line and that we like so basically there's other levels involved i i if this would be much easier for me to say out loud if i have my chart in front of me because yeah, i just read a, ran a bunch of fib levels earlier yeah. and stuff but it's okay for us to range as long as we don't break down again. Right. That's really That's, what I'm trying to say. That was pretty much what I was trying to say, yeah. too. Like in yeah. kind of, I tend to agree with Chemistry Bro. Like He thinks the likely scenario could be we have the first proper, quote-unquote, bear market rally, then dump to the same range, 16, 17K range, and just stay flat there, he said, till later this year. I think we'll slow... We will pump up, fall back in range, pump mm -hmm. up, you know, and I eventually we'll flip that 20 line. I, yeah. I hope we do it sooner than later because I think most of the range we're going to stay in this year is going to be between 20 and 28. And then the true bear market rally in like June, July up to maybe 40 and then falling back down. But again, most of this year, I'm I'm holding that most of this year will be between 20 and 28. That's why I want to see us get up to that 20 level sooner because I want that to be right. No question. <laughs> so when people do tax loss harvesting, when you sell, you ha have to wait, what, 30 days to buy again? I don't know. It's a good question. How long? Uh, question being, now granted, we wouldn't know these exact numbers, but say everyone sold on you know, December 30th, mm -hmm. would they intentionally be trying to keep the prices down within that 30-day window? So like right now, they pump it, everyone gets excited, they put in exit liquidity, you do one last dump, and then you do your buy right after you get outside of that buy zone to properly tax loss harvest. Now, these are questions because I actually don't know how this works. Yeah, that is true. That I did just look it up, and yeah, the chat is confirming 30 days is the minimum wait period. Uh, that's it. I think that's a very valid theory. I tend to... Because we would be in that window, and they would want it to crash again, I would think. Yeah, I tend to... Th I don't tend to put as much value on things like uh, tax loss harvesting, Chinese New Year, uh, you know, tax day in general, you know, a lot of... Lot of there might be some you mean that feed the Fed day to feed the Fed day. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I tend to. I don't, I don't know. I I don't know if that's going to have that dramatic of effect when you look at like how much it takes to really move the market. It's it'd be an insane amount of tax loss harvesting. Not saying I I think really the people that hold enough Bitcoin to really move the market like that are probably trying. They're not claiming taxes in general. Well, False. I own C says it. You know, this doesn't apply to crypto. That's kind of what I was like. You know, this doesn't. Probably doesn't ride those same the lines. Thirty days, yeah. Look, rule. I, I don't know if that applies to crypto. I've heard or different not. things from Decker. I, I know don't. thirty days is. I just looked it up for stocks. That is true. Thirty days on, according to Forbes, anyway. Hot take. I don't harvest losses. I put in more. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe it's very hard to have fun. Oh. I'm out here so, buying my own blood when it's spilled on the streets. But yeah, I, I think, uh, like I said, we're going to look at this article here that uh, gives a few different reasons. Uh, B Bitcoin price three weeks high greets U.S. CPI. Five things to know in Bitcoin this week, and this is going to this is you know really going to break it down pretty well. Uh, charges above 17k. Let's see. Okay, so Bitcoin price is 17k. Managed to spike higher at January 9. Closed hitting levels absent from the chart. You know, here it is on Trading View. Uh, onwards and upwards to my 17.3, targets. Crypto Tony told Twitter, I've taken some profit here. Blah, blah, blah. Scalp long. Vandepop, what does he think? We'll continue rallying coming week, but probably have a drop due to Gemini correction. So some people are thinking this Gemini news could bring a, a price back down. I, that's the last thing I'm waiting to get settled. Like if there's a major, major investigation into uh, DCG by yeah. the Department of Justice, you know, that could be something that brings us back down. But at this point, I don't, I don't see anything else really hanging out there. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin Bitcoin was stuck between 16 and 18.5 for two months now, mm. they acknowledged. So again, like 
this is a pretty insane. Like if you're looking at these ranges here, it's funny when you say it out loud. We've been locked inside of this range for two months. Mm -hmm. like I mean, been here's a year. the. This was the falling wedge we were looking at last mm -hmm. week. I'm sorry to put this in a decent spot. That's from the June low until we broke down. Right, and so this is where we were. This is where we were just banging our heads on uh, sixteen nine forever, mm -hmm. and then boom. Well, Break no, this out. is down here. Nineteen six. Yeah, down here, and then we broke out above it. What is this he's looking at here? The uh, hmm. this is the twenty eight. The RSI. Up, up. I'm I'm just gonna go back here a little bit and look at some of these. All the high. It's pretty cool how he laid it out. The higher highs and higher mm -hmm. lows and stuff mm -hmm. for you to be able to see. I that just looks like such a floor to me, man. I don't right here. Know. Yeah. yeah, dude, like. It does, but then you, if you're not careful, you I mean they all start to look like floors. They all and then, start right, and then they they dribble, and then like they can drop down a lot easier than they go up. That's what you've learned when you're yes. looking at those like sideways, and then you're yes. a lot more likely to, and then sideways, and then you know. But yep. uh, th this is the the CPI is what's really interesting to me because I tend to agree with Drew. I think we're gonna have a positive CPI. All eyes, and and again, we know the Fed is in control in a lot of different ways. You know, for better or worse, right now, like when they're pumping uh, or when they're printing, things are going up. When they're tightening, mm -hmm. things are going down. So all eyes, including those of the Federal Reserve, are on inflation data this week in December. The print consumer CPI due for release. Uh, the key component on the Fed policy and traders and analysts alike are keenly aware that signals it provides can sh lead to shifts in stance. Recently, CPI has been declining, hinting the Fed's egg. E existing interest rate hikes have had positive impact on inflation, which again, it hasn't really been declining as much as they wanted it to generally speaking, which I think is why things are, have been tough, mm -hmm. uh, expecting enormous volatility, huge cash, cash position and light position size for me says another trader. So you want to be prepared for a lot of changes as thing, you know, because one direction or the other, you know, if it comes in great, we're probably very bullish. If it comes in above expected, it's probably going to, it's probably going to be really bad. What do you mean? The, the Harry Styles? Yeah. <laughs> it's a One Direction joke. The One Direction, yeah. Good. Wow. Uh, let's see. Wow. Chemistry Bros says USDT dominance has been falling, and it's coming to test an ascending support level that's been holding since April 22. If that breaks down, could signal this is more than just a bear rally, but vice versa if it holds. Interesting. Uh, we've got, this is what we were talking about just beforehand, the CME Group's Fed Watch tool, the chances of a 25-point basis hike have risen all the way to 75%, which is extremely, uh, you know. That's pretty, that was surprising. Yeah. When you said that, I thought it'd be 50-50. Yeah, I thought they were keeping their uh, foot firmly on the gas pedal. That's kind of the impression I got at the end of last year. Called but the freight rates, remember the graph from freight rates that we looked at? Yeah. The complete correction, the freight rate cost is actually below what it was pre-COVID now. Wow. Um, you have okay. a, a major drop in uh, regular fuel and diesel fuel. Um, yeah, man. But like, not eggs. But not eggs. But not eggs. Okay. But not eggs. Just and, checking. You know, that, that's where it's so like, there's so many different levels that are happening at the same time, and it's how you report on them that matters. Rent is still moving upwards. Uh, demand for mortgage is slightly going downwards. So there's, a, but yeah, I, I feel like we're going to get dovish language with a 50 base point i'm still sticking to my 50 base points and then see i've been on 20 i've been on 25 for a while i thought they were because they did 25 no. four straight 50s right and then i think they're going to do 25 back down and then maybe I, no, they did four straight 75 yeah four straight yeah, 70, yeah they did 25 say. 50 four straight 75s then they did 50, 50. on the way down mm -hmm. i think they're gonna do 25 you know basically ramp up and then ramp back down mm. and then try to hold after like if they do 25 here Maybe they don't do another one. You know, mm -hmm. we'll see. But obviously, it's all going to be uh, according to the uh, these CPI numbers. Real quick, right. uh, we had Rasmus. So this is where we're at. BJ, One Direction puns oh, must, re must really be a bear market. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, oil futures trending towards negative year over year. Uh, Urkelson said we might get fifty bips if CPI is closer to seven. That it could be true. This this might mean a lot of other people are leaning towards CPI coming in decent. Uh, so here it is, 75% saying uh, 0.25, 25% saying 50 basis points. 
Uh, Long-term skeptics, including uh, investor Michael Burry, maintain that inflation will return with the Fed obliged to raise rates again as a result, which this would this was an interesting uh, theory that he had about them backing off going into the middle of the year, getting kind of a mid-year rally and then tightening back up again because it's not going the direction they need, mm-hmm. which would fit perfectly with the Bitcoin four-year cycle to have that mid-year fake out that mm-hmm. I've been talking about and then fall back down into the range for the rest of the year and then really start moving in 2024, yep. I, which I think is what we're all kind of leaning on. CPI, uh, unlikely to fall as low as 2%, let alone go negative, says Goldbug Peter Schiff, which I tend to agree with. But I agree with you that the Fed will return to QE and the official inflation rate will hit a new high. The unofficial actual rate will hit a new all-time record. So they're predicting they're going to start printing again and... Um, off to the races. Off to the races. And infl- they're just, inflation's going to come right back, and then we're going to be probably back in the uh, problem scenario very soon. Short-term memory. It's gonna, they're yeah. going to start printing in QE right as the political ads for the presidential election begin at oh, the end of 2023. Sure. Yep. That's okay. well put. There is yeah. no... Well put. They're not going to sit there and let everything be in shambles no. as they try to convince everyone to go back with the blue right. um, uh-huh. a year from then, and their the advertising just spoken. starts... I'm not going to do it. I don't care which side That's you are. That's actually, just, I have not even thought about that. You're 100% right. Yeah, I know. They're going to make sure everything looks like we're just, we're great, everybody. It's great. We fixed best, it. Best ever. We built we back. We did it. It's we better. We built back better. Yeah. We it's built great. back and it's better. Uh, Bud Light, you made a great point. That's exactly what happened in the 70s. Burrow is, Burry is right. Yeah, they've done this before. When we had raging inflation before, we started to curtail it. We, we got back into the market too quick and then it spiked even higher. Right. Uh, yeah, it does tend to... Uh, Oh, he says, well, Chemistry Bro says oil futures are already negative year over year right now, so that's not going to look great on this next month's inflation data. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, the next thing, this is what we were just talking about. DCG publicly faces the music as the fallout from the FTX saga rolls on. It's institutional investor giant DCG coming in for a grilling this month. Exposure to FTX heightened pressure on DCG subsidiaries is an increasingly complex story, which has even raised questions about the future of the largest institutional Bitcoin investment vehicle, which is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, currently has Bitcoin assets under management in excess of $10 billion. Share price, according to CoinGlass, trades at a implied 44% discount spot price. And this is, int- like, this is, uh, where is, I might have accidentally closed it. When did this article come out? This was probably this morning. Was it? This is their weekly. Uh, I'll go back up and look. I remember I was eight hours ago. Okay, yeah, I remember I left the office on Friday, running around in a tizzy because that Morgan Stanley move into GBTC. Mm-hmm. Why would they do that with all this fud going on? I lost one of my uh, quotes, and this is something that got me. Th- like DCG is very well positioned within. Um... Hold on one second. I'm going to look for government this yeah with uh power players within washington and big money and i think they are uh i think they're they're positioned well to get out of this with a lot of their uh positions that they have right now this Mm -hmm. this is something that's interesting that i saw come out this is again this is pure conjecture but prosecutors are telling the lawyers connected to sbf fraud investigation that the case is so sprawling that it could exhaust resources of the Southern District since it includes potential bribery campaign contributions, market manipulation on top of theft and fraud. Who fuckity who? You guys made enough money. You have enough money. Well, that's (laughs) always the argument that they make is we don't have the resources it takes to prosecute this. We don't have the resources it takes to... We just need to take... We just need to tax you a little bit more and we'll get this all sorted out. And this is where you start to see some... Like, this is where your wheels start turning on the conspiracy theory that, wait a minute, they're all already making excuses as why they can't properly prosecute this yep and you know the the tweet i originally had was tying this to dcg genesis and uh barry silver if all of their resources are going into ftx and they don't even have enough resources to handle that how are they going to fight digital currency group at the same time absolutely and so i think they're going to go for quick settlements so they can plant their flag and say look look at what we did we we cleaned it up we we went in we did we did an investigation and we got this money. So they're going to have to probably pay somebody. They're probably going to have to, you know, uh, you know, massage the politics a little bit. But I have a feeling they're going to be able to work their way through this and not have to uh, fold Grayscale. They're not going to have to. They might have. If they have to fold Genesis, I think they could live with that. They're going to have to basically live to fight another day. They're going to have mm-hmm. to make some concessions. But I think it's going to get resolved fairly quickly because that's in the best interest of digital currency group it's also 
likely in the best interest of the SEC from a uh, and Department of Justice from a political posturing and public trust public perception and yeah. what, what do you when you think about it these are all people that are trying to get reelected right they need yeah. wins they need headlines more than they need actual justice Absolutely. and that's something you need to keep in mind all the time it's not about Sad. justice it's about advancing their careers i like yeah. how you said massage yeah. the politics i'm like what is that a dc happy ending yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah uh cory wants on the front of the shirt boo fuckity who on the back <laughs> of the shirt the truth hurts i would buy that listen you know i understand why they're worried about not being able to try these things correctly they just need more tax money because i mean the fbi used the wrong saw opening up epstein's safe and getting the black book out that's why all the evidence was dismissed so they need more of your tax money. They need better saws. They need better procedures. Oh, uh, you are right, Urkelson. They did miss the window for bankruptcy. I guess I should have said just fold it. You know, if they end up having to fold Genesis, they're not going to be able to chapter 11 it specifically, but they could restructure. There's a lot of things they could do, yeah, uh, yeah. but they're not going to get chapter 11 protection. They did miss the window for that because they're stupid. Yep. Well, they're it's not stupid. Fun. They're just yeah, I think I they're stupid. Say, there's a reason they missed it. Allegedly. Yeah, because they're trying to, they're trying, they're greedy. That's the real reason. They don't want to let anything go. They wanted to cover it up with a left pocket, right pocket loan. Mm. Um, or a bailout. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. I, Getting money from other bailout. Raising, huh? Well, not, not, <laughs> yeah. not like taxpayer bailout, but they'll invest, they'll raise money from other investors and probably get that bailout. Uh, I don't want to bail out. Leave me he wrote, in, yeah, there's the open letter. DCG delivered to Genesis. We've already talked about a, m enough of this. So if they, and this is, uh, who is saying this? Where is this coming from? Describing the recent events, Checkmate lead on-chain analysis at Glassnode said that DCG was continuing to blow up in slow motion and Bitcoin price is basically a stable coin, he added. In 2023, all depends on DCG at this point. Uh, if they somehow collapse, it's going to get ugly. That could be our last leg down to 85% drawdowns from Bitcoin's all-time high. And that's pretty much what I, I tend to agree with too. That That's the only thing I see bringing us down below the lows we've hit right now, 15.5, would be something like Digital Currency Group folding or ha great, having to sell their shale, shares in grayscale trust and liquidate it at a massive loss would would obviously uh, put insane selling pressure on Bitcoin. Yeah. Also, I think, uh, what, uh, dude, what my mind says, I think this is great because they just pointed out how they um, are axing what the 7600 irs agents is 86,000 87,000 yeah. and it's so funny seeing all the people be like oh that's so you know all the rich people can get away with more money and yeah. it's like do you really think those agents were for those people right no or there for, was for the, the regular they people. wanted to monitor all those 600 dollars venmo transactions yeah, but it, it's right. funny that people like <laughs> that narrative has already gotten manipulated where people are like no no this isn't what this is bad this is good for the rich people only and it's like whatever the narrative really? is question it right yeah. that's what mm -hmm. i say because uh it's most likely bs yep um we we talked about this a little bit earlier in the show miners break severe severe selling streak they'll probably yeah they have the same glass node you know minor net position change you know negative 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 boom they're finally accumulating again they're holding more than they're selling uh which obviously 10 you know like the miners tend to know the market very, very well. So if like if you're looking at worst of the bear market, okay, we're gonna start holding now towards the bottom and accumulating. It's probably it's probably a pretty good sign. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go back and look historically. Oh, yeah. um, let's see, separate glass node with miners BTC reserves hitting their highest. Yeah, so the reserves are going up as well. Uh, last week, Bitcoin's network difficulty adjusted downward. We were talking about this in a few mm -hmm. weeks past that we would need that difficulty adjustment. When that happens, the price of creating each Bitcoin gets cheaper, which puts less pressure on the miners, which is what allows them to hold more of their Bitcoin. You know, so this all works together. It's a beautiful system. Uh, you know, around 3.6% taking into account a drop in the compensation among active miners, according to the latest forecast from BTC.com. However, the next adjustment will wipe out those losses to add 9% to the difficulty level. In doing so, marking a fresh all-time high. So now this is uh, in hash rate or difficulty. So now this is an mm -hmm. interesting thing to keep an eye on. We could see uh, when it, it goes up roughly twelve. I want to, yeah, I want to see what the date is for that next difficulty adjustment um, because that could be a time to be looking for a correction there. Like if we're pushing yeah. up against a, a, you know, a value area high or certain levels that we're hitting resistance at, and then we get a difficulty adjustment, that could be send us right back down into a, a specific range. And that's where this is where it's fun to use technicals and fundamentals, you know, together. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people that are traders, they're just pure technical analysis. Look, what the chart says is what I do. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and very ironically, most of the time, or maybe not, 
the charts do line up with the macro like we were talking about like mm -hmm. if yep. if the fed was to do this and then it fits into that and then the charts say this like it's very interesting but right now we're seeing a lot of confluence between the charts and the macro and using something like a difficulty adjustment to get com confirmation when you're at the top of a channel you know you could not be like if you're at the bottom you know watch out for a breakdown of course but uh, and this is another thing that you look at sometime extreme fear hitting 18 month uh, high crypto volume, basically, which is the fear and greed index. I mean, it's been hanging around, yeah, 25, 27. Yeah, it's been for, there forever. That's fine. Yeah. This is great to me. I mean, it, it is. is. Yeah. Well, and it's what's interesting is I'm seeing more and more people coming back to Bitcoin's dead, right? Yeah. You know, like I've had, I had three or four people say that to me over yeah. the weekend at the, at the Falcons game. I ran into somebody like, oh, you still doing that Bitcoin thing? It's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're doing it and they're like i thought it was all a scam and it's like no that's just what they tell you every four years when the prices are best to buy as like, you're driving <laughs> away in your vehicle that you purchased with it you know exactly. it's a scam right stay out of it what are you doing well and it's i mean to in their defense they hear about <laughs> ftx and they think ftx is bitcoin or they think ftx is crypto like people people are starting to right. get a little separation between like what a bitcoin company is and what is actually a bitcoin network Mm -hmm. But the mainstream media is trying to pound it through their head that FTX equals crypto equals scam. FTX was a fraud. Crypto is a fraud. We need regulators. We need big banks. We need trusted third parties in crypto or it's never going to go anywhere. And that is the exact opposite ethos of what we need in crypto. We do right. not need trusted third party. We need self-sovereign individuals that know how to custody their own assets. We need smart contracts that allow peer-to-peer -peer transactions to happen without permission all over the world for people to be able to interact with the global economy. We need globalization without global banks. We yeah. need global economy and fair trade without uh, uh, tariffs and uh, middlemen. What's the, what's the sanctions? That's the word Thanks. I was looking for. Yeah. We, need, we need open, we need permissionless, we need immutable, we need uh, a fair system. And I think that's what Bitcoin Us provides. using those sanctions is what's going to catapult us towards the system that you're talking about, though, man. Just showing the rest of the world our absolute control on the, how money moves. If you think outside of what um, the U.S. State Department thinks, then you will be you will be in compliance with OFAC very quickly. So learning that, it's coming to light. I think that it's as ugly as it is. It's really good for humanity to wake the hell up, like we're seeing in Brazil. So, yes, yeah, we're, oh yeah, we have some Brazil stuff too. I like, know. And I was gonna say Bricks Banks. Bricks Banks is Crazy. all a part of that. Like they're actually fighting back against the status quo when it comes to petrodollar and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I'm gonna move through this real quick. So let's see, how are we doing? Hey on, Raz, uh, just follow me on Twitter and message me, and and I got you because I feel bad. You got for scammers. The bots. Yeah, we dude, got scammers on that acting like AJ. Works on Instagram. Oh, on yeah. Instagram, yeah. there's like a hundred yeah. a day. On Every Twitter, day. there's like twenty yeah. a day. There's no fake Drew White. And I'm like Elon. There. I thought you were fighting yeah. the bots. Uh, you need to put if you don't have it in your profile, make sure you put it yeah. directly at the top. I will never. DM you about crypto. Yeah, uh, yeah, I okay. do. And guys, if you if if you go to an account that says I will never DM you about crypto and you're DMing them, just you know, just that's a stupid tax right there. Right. I'm sorry. Just yeah. Block. Uh Corey Harden said, Yeah, I told one of my best friends that he needs to start buying. And his response was, dude, crypto scares the shit out of me. Did you see how much money Brady lost? Yeah. Mm. No, it's true. I mean, and this is the this is interesting looking at the fear and greed index on like a line chart here. I mean, obviously it's flatlined. Everybody's, you know, it's there was a little bit of hope here, and then you know this was when this is when the crash was actually happening, and then this is the these are the people that you're not going to scare away. This is everybody in this basement right here. This doesn't even show the real crash. The real crash no, got us. No, it's only over the last. Yeah, because we were down to five. Couple months. We were really. down to five or four during Luna. And this is hot. this is something else on the altcoin. This is we talked at the beginning of the show about some of the altcoins that pump, but this is due to extremely low volume. Yeah. And that's something you guys need to keep in mind. When there's very low volume, it's very easy to move them quickly in one direction. So altcoin volume being very low, you know, here's a chart here. You know, you get one, you Ooh. get a spikes. You know, these, now these are sell spikes, obviously, and crashes. Uh, and then look look at the volume here since. Yeah. You know, it's like next to nothing. And that that a lot of times is what I'm looking at when I'm looking for uh, bottoms or flat lines. When, they're, when mm -hmm. the volume, which it has been, like the overall volume, I think has been like 22 billion like pretty much this whole month of December and then the first week or so of January, mm. volume was gone on Bitcoin. I mean, there was some volume on Bitcoin and Ethereum, but on all coins, it was just like non-existent. Mm -hmm. And so you get very, it's very easy when the volume is that low to see something like what we saw over the weekend where, uh, you know, we get a very small move from Bitcoin and then poof, alts rocket because you've got a few people in there with uh, 
buy and sell orders that they know they can uh, they can pump that price up and then yeah. take some quick profit. So uh, that this is from crypto crypto quant here. So those are some things to keep an eye on. Uh, and this is this the altcoin volume is something to keep an eye on as time continues. Um, because again, we're not out of the don't be thinking any of your alts are going to all time highs. Like, if there's anything, anything that's a fake out rally here, it's going to be on altcoins. I think mm -hmm. Bitcoin can probably hold some of these levels because there's volume and there's support there. Uh, you know, Gala, don't don't FOMO into Gala right now off 150% pump. I can tell you mm -hmm. that much. There's going to be some corrections on yep. some of these things if there haven't been already. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and just again, trade carefully, accumulate the ones that you think are going to be here in 24 and 25 but don't don't go crazy because again it's going to be there's going to be a lot there's a journey here um yes. if and i i'm just so fortunate i'm coming back to my 2019 experience uh which is part of why i pulled a litecoin story for tom crown and mm. there's so much to talk about oh, so i much. know it's exciting it's happening it's, yeah, it's it all is happening, like it man. does feel like it's finally starting to yeah. come around even if there's more negative to go at, at least there is like some relief and like I know after the end of the year, at least we got a relief rally. Even if it's just a relief rally, at least we got that. Like, right. You got to go follow Sofa King Cryptic after this show, AJ. Look at <laughs> oh this guy. God. He said I had to follow AJ with seven accounts to make sure he got that 5K. Oh, because I did. Guys I lifted his whole right, Twitter Sofa account King, Just message up. me on Twitter. I got you. Because I, right. I did a... I, he uh, counts he's supposed no, to message you if so, he hold on. Oh, you did that giveaway. Yeah, no, one of my friends told me... Um, cause I was like talking about, I was almost at 5k. We were talking on the phone, uh, one of my friends from Maryland and, uh, I was like 350 away from 5,000 and it was, uh, it was like Wednesday night and he was like, I bet you can't make it to 5k by, fr by the end of Friday. And I was like, who can't? So like, <laughs> well, we like made this bet and technically I lost cause I was at four, nine, nine, seven oh. at midnight <laughs> Saturday, told me. Saturday yeah. morning. So technically I lost. That's and funny. I pulled out all, I pulled it all, the big guns out, and I, I could have helped. I lost. Yeah. I lost. Yeah. At least you by own three. It. At least you. Own it was it. a valiant effort. It was. A valiant all right, we're gonna effort. move through some of this stuff quick because we're running short on time. Uh, but Tofa King just messaged me, and I'll follow you back. Uh, Alex Gladstein, this is in response. Uh, well, it's probably not to, it, probably indirectly um, response to the the doofus on Rogan, but. Uh, the simplest thing cannot be made clear to the most intelligent man if he is firmly persuaded that he knows already, without a shadow of a doubt, what is laid before him. And this is Tolstoy, you know, like this is a, obviously an old quote, and he says it's on Bitcoin and no coiners. That sounds like Dostoevsky from The Idiot. Yeah, and then this <laughs> is Coin Bureau. Um, we're not going to even watch the clip, but the strength of conviction of a no coiner is directly proportion to, proportional to his ignorance of it. Prime mm. example here, which right. is basically the guy people speaking with extreme uh, confidence and authority on Bitcoin. Basically, he says Bitcoin's going to zero, all coins, yeah. it's a says, all coins yeah. are going to zero, Bitcoin's going negative. We yeah. need trusted third parties <laughs> in the space. And it's yeah. like basically he's saying Bitcoin can't be trusted. You can only trust the government. And it's like, okay, you're paid off. Yeah. You know? yeah. Right. Uh, and there's a lot uh. of people who are making good points about you know spooks and stuff like that. Government spooks don't look like spooks. They uh, have very substantial careers that get boosted up for years and years over time and they use them very they deploy those assets very sparingly and precisely when needed to create a curate a specific message uh yeah the dude's a clown i mean he was getting roasted yeah. all on twitter so if you guys just go anywhere on crypto twitter and you'll see everybody's takes on i that. say we all you know we should do like a little like a little prize for whoever dunks on him the hardest on twitter <laughs> yeah. you know i think if you tag you tag like my name in the dunk my favorite one wins something. Go. Okay. You, got, right. you got to the end of the day. We'll do it. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh, three possible reasons why Cardano skyrocketed real quick, and then we're going to get into some of the Brazil stuff and try not to get canceled. Uh, Cardano's price has been on fire. Uh, let's see. Total, this, uh, we're just going to hit it quick. Total value lock soars. So the first metric to consider is total, total value locked and various protocols using Cardano. Data from the popular DeFi Llama reveals that TVL has soared almost 40% since That's the beginning of 2020. That's really that hot. Interesting. That is uh, at the time of this writing, it sits around 67 million, holding the lion's share with the 27 million. It's also worth noting that the most of the increase came in the past 24 hours as well, when the TVL shot up by around 20 percent. Now let me. Hmm. Now what? What is this? Does this adjust with the prices? BJ. So like, does total value like if there's X amount of Cardano, like are they? How are they counting total value locked in dollar value? If the price pumps, doesn't that mean the total value locked? technically goes up in dollars I think we go by the when the so? when the ADA is the same or are they talking about new ADA into being locked 
I actually, I personally go by the market cap. That's an we need to find that out if the price goes up. Because if the, this is just the price pumping, you know, like this is the total TVL going up. Mm -hmm. But if that's just a reflection of the price going up. Yeah, because total value locked insinuates that it's. That's the new amount of money being locked. Like that much more money was locked. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it should be new, new ADA being locked up. Right. In my opinion. Uh, and then this is something to watch on Cardano in 2023 specifically. This is, I don't, I know Justin Williams was talking about this the other day. We've seen the, uh, NFT community start going crazy on Cardano in the past year. Hmm. There's not a ton necessarily of actual DeFi going on there yet, but it's poised to explode right now. And if we see, I, I could see a resurgence of layer ones here, uh, especially in the wake of Solana falling out of kind of the mainstream attention. If we could get some real DeFi going on Cardano, that bodes extremely well for a lot of the work they've been doing, and uh, it would be pretty bullish long-term. Uh, for the past seven days, the transaction volumes increased by some 57%. Uh, mini, min swap alone has experienced 76%. It's also a market leader and somewhat expected. This is all, yeah, they've got Dejed coming out, uh, algorithmic stablecoin. Again, you know, be careful with those. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, they've got a, they've got a non-algorithmic stablecoin coming as well, correct? Um, I'm not sure, but I just I remember, I can't, remember I can't remember shake that. the Luna algorithmic stable coin out of my brain, but I am yeah. a major fan of ADA in general. Like I'm buying ADA. It's one of the four that I'm willing to buy in this yeah, well, bear this market. Stable coins on, is basically, they need stable coins in order for the yeah. DeFi to start to pro proliferate the way it's right. supposed to. Yeah. I'm a little bit more positive this week towards Carter. I mean, that was, a, that was just my long term. Like, what am I going to do with it in seven years, Corey? So don't, don't freak out about it. But, yeah. Uh, Oh, um, Crimson. So the next governance, um, Algorand governance, excuse me, uh, the 16th, it locks, it stops on the 16th. It's a three month lockup. Uh, there's like folks finance. You could do it there. You could do it on my pair. There's a bunch of places you can do it, but I think I'm either going to do it on folks, uh, finance or, um, my pair. So I'm not sure. Or you can just leave it on Coinbase for 5%, but that's no fun. That's yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. uh, algorithmic stable coins have had their worst year in 2022 with the collapse of the entire Terra Luna ecosystem. So, guys, if you don't know, that's, you know, the, the Terra Luna uh, stable coin, algorithmic stable coin is a big part of what caused that whole thing to unwind because it basically got attacked mm -hmm. and the, the algorithm did what it was supposed to do, but it wasn't able to fight off the attack. And so then the whole thing collapsed, uh, which is. Again, it's an interesting experiment. I'm glad there's an al another algorithmic stablecoin on Cardano, but just mm -hmm. be extremely, extremely careful is what I would say with those yeah. things. Uh, however, there's still anticipation building to the event, and it could be part of the reasons for the recent increases in the price of ADA. It was also at a ex same thing, extremely uh, pivotal point in the technicals where if it held uh, down in the price range where it was for a long time, it would have flipped extremely bearish long term. Mm -hmm. So getting this little move back up is, is actually great in the short term and uh, long term for Cardano. Uh, all righty. So now this this was kind of a surprise to me. I didn't really know a lot of this was going on. I saw a tweet like, did an attempted coup just happen oh, in Brazil last night? Yeah. I was like, what? Did it? <laughs> uh, Lula was just sworn in as president of Brazil. Lula was convicted of running one of the largest bribery screams in Brazilian history. No big deal. A federal judge overturned his arrest with no clear reason. Obviously. Why isn't our media asking questions? Hmm. Uh, I I have a pretty good idea of why <laughs> media isn't. Yeah, I know Dejet isn't anything like it. I'm just saying be careful <laughs> with stable coins in general. Drew's like the peanut gallery over here. Every After every mm -hmm. sentence, he is like, mm hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonder Obviously, why. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, Drew, I feel like the truth. Wants to come out yeah, again. You kind of seem like, like you were building inside. Well, okay. The chat loves you. I'm all about now it's, the truth. <laughs> yeah, give, give it to Share us. Share the truth. So, give us the truth. Bolsonaro, he's loved by the people. Um, he was even like stabbed in the street when he was uh, running for presidency before he was hired in um, for this uh, last stint that he spent. But Lula is definitely disliked a lot among r a many regular people. Um, it's almost like the red and blue situation that we have right now. They even have their own shaman that showed up to the Brazilian uh, Congress capital this weekend. So it's been basically, uh, it's like a mirror movement of January 6th in the U.S., but it's a lot more aggressive because they've been dealing with it for a lot longer. So they have a lot heavier responses. And here in America, you saw January 6th, yeah, we, you know, did some things allegedly, but it wasn't anything compared to what you see in Sri Lanka, what you're going to, what you see in France, go check out what's in France, 
civil unrest is starting to take mm-hmm. hold across the country, uh, not just this country, but across the world, heavily uh, across the world more so. So, um, you know, civil unrest and uh, people's just distaste for um, these these are basically dictatorships. These are gussied up dictatorships is what they are. And what's um, very interesting to me in all of this is we know we've been talking about it on this show specifically the last few weeks about how pivotal Brazil is going to be yeah. in this new economy with yep. Bitcoin specifically. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they are the kind of focal point of a lot of the geopolitical or the economic upheaval that's going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And to see potential interference in an election down there it's very bizarre uh you know here right here's a video clip of some of the stuff that's going on you know down there this is their supreme court a lot of like what drew was saying a lot of a lot of extremely unhappy and confused people that it feels like a very uh thrown election in a lot of ways all Mm -hmm. eyes need to be on brazil right now democracy is completely under attack bolsonaro supporters are invading congress the presidential palace and the realms of power in brazil unbelievable scenes Uh, wow. There's yeah. even military standing against police um, in different parts of it. The military wow. protecting the people Damn. and the police on the other side trying to protect the government building. So, wow. yeah, it's definitely, um, and you saw the same thing in Sri Lanka when that went down. These things are going to pick up pace. That's why I prepare and I'm into crypto for the money to prepare more. Because, Prepping. yeah, like um, I definitely see civil unrest as the biggest threat, um, you know, kind of day to day i mean i don't think we're basically three missed meals from bad behavior in this country to say it blatantly so yeah (laughs) name mr wilkes that has the woke press blamed donald trump yet for what happened in brazil yes they They have have. they have have. have. it's trump's fault uh and then chemistry said their old president really wasn't that great at least from what i've seen in the media and the news so you know hedge your hedge your bets there but maybe i'm being fed a bias yeah it did seem like uh yeah I'm, I don't know if he was the greatest. It's just uh, when you know the person that's getting in there is been no, obviously known for bribery and corruption, uh, that's really yeah. what ca- causes for pause. And again, when you see the vast civil unrest, clearly the people uh, know what their choice is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of what you think of the person, clearly of the two options, the people chose one and they're being forced into another one and they're pushing back pretty hard. Uh, this I was I've heard this this was an interesting picture that just makes it seem weirdly uh, uh, coordinated. I but guess this you could say. might have been an that, older picture. That's what I was gonna say. This isn't necessarily from what's going on right now, from yeah. what I understand. But either way, it's bizarrely similar. <laughs> and when you look at some of the stuff that's uh, well, media travels fast, man. Yeah, they see does. what's that's, going on in one location, crazy. and you know, yeah. I mean, somebody asked what was January sixth. This was January sixth. This was the. Uh, this was- that but was it. That, it was, so that was the political so, theater. That was all that happened. Yeah. Crazy story. Um, you know, if you some of you guys might know, I uh, I lived on Orcas Island, Washington, for four years before you know I came back to Maryland and then eventually ended up here. But anyway, um, I had a really good friend. Um, her name starts with a U. I'm not going to say her name. Maybe she might not want me to. Ulysses. Yeah, sure. So uh, she was a really good <laughs> friend of mine. Really good friend of Jada. Ursula. Um, and on January sixth, there was one girl. That kind of smashed through that window with the uh, with the riot shield mm-hmm. and got shot by the cop, like mm-hmm. the one girl that officially died. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was my friend's sister. Oh wow! Whoa. Like the Crazy. smallest world ever, and it was just like one person died that whole day. And, and her course, mom got arrested. It's my friend's sister. Like what? Wait, Ashley Babbitt, you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, her mom got arrested this weekend for jaywalking and uh, when they were doing a so, memorial for her daughter being shot. Ursula's really? mom. Yeah, her, her mom name, was arrested. Got arrested. Yeah. Dang. For, and uh, remembrance to her daughter. Really? Yep. You're gonna have to send me that because I know her too. <laughs> so I wow. I'm laughing because of that, Crazy. I'm laughing because the Super Troopers reference. Uh, because of the name. Yeah. Yeah. Ursula. Oh. Uh, That's real, sad. Real quick that before we sad. wrap up, I wanted to give a, drop a little alpha on some different Litecoins. This is kind of a long shot, but I'll say it three times. Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin. Oh God damn it! Oh, there he is. Oh, Big shout out to Tom Crown, that dude. Uh, friend of the channel, friend of uh, <laughs> just a good, good all around guy. You guys should yeah, definitely check cool. out his channel. Yep. Uh, does a lot of great TA. And speaking of TA, the charts have been looking pretty bullish or s- bullish setups coming in for litecoin for a long time i think it had a pretty good pump here and i wanted to give you guys speaking of what uh has happened in the past and in 2019 yeah we're up eight percent to you know on the day uh, looking very good on litecoin let's look at the you know there's the week month you know three months 
you know, so it's looking pretty good on a lot of the longer time frames. Look, this it's out looking. above. It's right up above this here. There's really Ooh. nothing between it and, you know, around 100 bucks roughly. Uh, but this is extremely important. There's a reason. On it. Again, there's technical reasons and there's fundamental reasons. And this is something I... If you go back and look at Litecoin in 2019 and we, if we, I'm going to ask the chat, who knows why Litecoin should be bullish in 2023, just like it was in 2019. If you do, it's a fundamental reason. It's something we've, yep, it's something we've talked. There it is. Urkelson said it. Yep. Uh, it's, it, this is why you need to know what the emission rate is of the, of the tokens. Like we talked about what the total supply is and how it works. Everybody's saying it. It's the having. Litecoin yep. is yep. about to have a, it's going to have We a, got smart listeners. We do yep. have smart listeners. We, we know. Those we know. Smartest people in crypto hang out in the basement. Right. We know that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Litecoin is is a fork of Bitcoin. It works very similar. It has a having on a four year cycle, but it's on a different timeline. Mm -hmm. It's having will be August 2023, where the supply will start to get cut in half. Again, I it was a play I used in 2019. Let's look at the uh, the all time here. So here we go. Here was the you know obviously all time high, boom, huge fall. Now here's 2019 having, and look at that big run up mm -hmm. it had after the having. Now yeah. again, you want to get out after that, and then it ran all the way back to up up in the bull market. It's not one of my favorite ones in bull markets because it's barely making new all time highs. I'd mm -hmm. still rather be in uh, layer one that probably has more prospects in it but if you're looking for a sneaky pick mid 20 you know mid bear market mm -hmm. you can get some decent liquidity some probably a decent pump on litecoin so again not financial advice do your own research whatever but knowing those fundamentals and we don't have to read this whole article but basically that's what it says you know there's a having coming um coming yeah. congratulations it's worth keeping an eye on how this is how fine monetary theory should work not just taking loans out on top of the other. And, hey, look at that. You know. and, and maybe a predictable monetary policy that doesn't change and everybody knows like, hey, this Turn is the rules of there. the game and this is the way it works. Do and you guys know how much sense that would make? Yeah. yeah, dollars too almost. Yeah. Shout out to JPEG Junkies win hoodie for holders. Uh, That's JPEG. Ask JPEG Junkies. Do I have a Discord? Yeah. Yeah, put that in the Discord. Yep. Drop it. Uh, so, all right, guys, that's all we have time for today. Really enjoy you guys. Sorry about the uh, announcement. We're going to check on that schedule right no. now. but uh, uh, It is completely correct. I'm staring at it right now. Perfect. Mm. Dude, what does mine say? Urkelson, Carnivore, Chemistry Bro, Crimson Caravan Company, Aerial for Life, Crypto Thorn, 78th Div, Inevitable Junkie, Captain Corey. Yeah. Manly Crypto Curate, Razzmatazz. You know, we love you guys. Love you guys. Uh, we'll, we'll see you coming, guys. back here tomorrow. Basement Peace out. out, yo. Peace Bye. out. Bye. I'll be back Friday. Bye. So we need a better outro. That was really okay. nice.